Hey everyone, I'm Hashem. Thanks for tuning in to Pushing Film. I was recently able to borrow this Fujifilm GFX 50S2 from Fujifilm Australia to test out for a couple of weeks and compare it to the film shooting experience. And of course, I couldn't resist trying it for scanning some film as well. Because you've got that extra resolution, 50 megapixels, I thought I would ask for a macro lens. And the one they were able to lend me was the Fujifilm 120mm macro. And even though it's not a one-to-one -one magnification lens, I got an 18mm extension tube, which brings it a little bit closer. And yeah, even though it wasn't the most suitable for scanning every single film frame size, I've got uh, a few samples here that I thought would be interesting to share. And just with one I'm going to bring up on the screen for you right now to have a look at, you can see that obviously using a GFX to scan film is going to give you plenty of resolution. And if I'm zooming into it here, you can see that that is not going to be an issue. And I'm sure a lot of people would realize that, of course, you're going to get some great scan results with the GFX uh, medium format digital camera. But what I wanted to do in this video is just give you a quick glimpse of my experience using it to scan, some of the limitations, what are the benefits besides resolution, was there much of a difference when compared to scanning with my full frame digital camera or even a crop sensor digital camera for that sake, is it that much better than a lab scan, what about a flex type scan, I'm just going to give you a few comparisons so you can see what we have. So I use a GFX on a tripod with 120mm macro and the 18mm extension tube with the film mounted in the essential film holder, which I find the most convenient when you're scanning strips especially. So let's get into Lightroom and have a look at some of these scans. Okay, so with this scan you can see that I've got at least 7,000 pixels on the long end here and that means plenty of detail for making large prints and so on. Now this didn't even use the full sensor size, I had to crop in a little bit because with that GFX with the extension tube it wasn't a one to one magnification ratio so it was a little bit further than I'd like it. And the other thing about using extension tubes is that you do lose a bit of light meaning you have to use a lower shutter speed and be more careful of vibrations and having everything nice and sturdy. But let's uh, have a look at one of the main things we wanted to compare here which was what does it com look like compared to my 5D Mark IV scans that I normally do with 100mm macro lens. So obviously difference in resolution, you can see 5700 pixels roughly and if we zoom in to see how much of a difference that makes, uh, yeah there is a jump in resolution. Now obviously if you had 100S GFX or similar you would get a bigger jump but besides that, was there much benefit to sharpness? What do you guys think? For me, I can see a bit of a benefit in sharpness to the GFX. If you look at the car door handle here, despite the fact that it's more magnified. But otherwise, the 5D holds up pretty well. And if we go here to where the petrol pump is, uh, you can see that you get similar shadow detail, similar highlight retention, and a nice clean image overall in terms of color noise, for example. But let's compare the GFX scan to the lab scan I have of this image. So now we have the lab scan on the right, the GFX scan on the left. And this is where I can really start to see a little bit of a, a significance in the, in the overall scan when looking at it zoomed out. I can see a much cleaner result with the GFX and a little bit more of a, a grungy, muddy look, especially in the shadows with the lab scan. Not to say that the lab scan looks bad, this is a high res Noritsu scan. It's just a different color rendition, a more smooth and flatter look, which again you can control via negative lab pro and such, but just zooming in the GFX scan holds up quite nicely. Now one thing I'm noticing besides the uh, obvious difference in resolution is that the lab scan looks a little bit sharper, but I think that's because with the lab scanners, they tend to apply a fair bit more sharpening in comparison, which you could do to this GFX scan. But yeah, Noritsu's give you a very sharp scan, but it's great to see that the GFX holds up well. But the more important thing is that I'm seeing a much cleaner result with the GFX. Sorry, I wouldn't say much cleaner, but it's I can notice it. I don't know if you guys can see it through the YouTube compression, but for example, the, the car bumper here on the front I can see more color noise in the lab scan showing up on the corner of the bumper. Now looking over here again near the petrol pump, you can see that with the camera scan you generally get a little bit more color detail in the shadows. Uh, the Noritsu has done really well though obviously, but one thing I'm noticing also is that there's less color noise, especially in the shadows. But yeah, just looking at these white bricks, it's just a bit of a cleaner look with the GFX. All right, so just for one extra note here, I wanted to show you what the difference would be if I was to downsize the GFX scan to a similar resolution as the 5D scan, would there be much difference? I've made them the same 5749 long end resolution and I've got the GFX scan on the right this time, the 5D Mark IV scan on the left, 
And when you downsize it to meet the same resolution uh, ratio, pixels, sorry, you can see that the GFX starts to really show its jump in sharpness and in detail compared to that 5D Mark IV scan. But again, it's not a huge difference and you probably could apply some sharpening to the, the full frame 5D scan. And they both have nice smooth color rendition and low level of uh, color noise. But one thing that I found to be an advantage is that as we move towards the corners, you can see that the 5D holds up better in terms of its sharpness towards the corners. And I believe this is in part due to me not using enough depth of field. The larger the sensor, the more depth of field you need to use. And using the um, extension tubes probably doesn't help either. And uh, again, just keep that in mind that my conditions using this medium format for camera to scan might not have been ideal. So I think you get a general idea here, but let's have a look at a few more frames just so we can kind of um, see if there's a, a trend occurring within some of these frames. So I've got three here with the uh, lab scan coming up first, the GFX scan in the middle and the 5D Mark IV scan on the right. From the outset, again, I see a little bit less muddiness in the two camera scans compared to the lab scan on the left, but let's um, remove the lab scan for a bit and just compare these two. And the first thing I see when looking at it zoomed out is there's a bit of a difference in the color rendition with the Canon file on the right, the reds and the oranges here, the yellow orange sort of colors look a little bit different. This is something that's pretty easy to replicate if you wanted to. All right, looking at another frame here, same order, lab scan on the left, GFX scan in the middle, full frame Canon 5D scan on the right. Which one do you prefer? There's a slight difference in color rendition throughout all of them. But to me, the GFX scan just from the outset looks a little bit cleaner. And again, there's so many variables here, so this doesn't mean you're necessarily gonna get the same result. But even when zooming in, just putting the lab scan next to the GFX scan, the result just looks a little bit flatter and smoother with a bit less color noise that again, I'm not sure if you guys can see through YouTube compression, but in this wall, I can especially see it uh, popping up in the lab scan here. That kind of gives you the idea. I've got another scan here with the same order, lab, GFX, Canon, but we're not gonna see a huge difference. So I won't bother getting into the uh, details on this one. I'll give you a moment to look at it because I can already see that it's a little bit muddier in the shadows of the lab scan compared to these two camera scans. But yeah, there's not gonna be a huge advantage to going up to a GFX 50, maybe if you went to a 100. Now, last thing I wanted to compare is what about a flex tight scan? I have a flex tight scan here of this frame shot a little while ago. And this was scanned as a TIFF on a flex type, can't remember which model it was, but it is very detailed and very sharp as well. So if we zoom into it and compare it to the GFX scan, which I have on the right, uh, before we do that, just from the outset, obviously there's a difference in color. I find that using NLP gives better colors than the flex type software in, in less amount of time. I'm sure you could get good colors with flex type software, but I do prefer the colors on the NLP GFX scan. And once we zoom in, now the flex type offers a lot of sharpness, but what I'm seeing here is that the GFX is holding up pretty much as well. There might be a bit more sharpness to the flex type, and I would think that it's sharper into the corners. It's a bit hard to tell with that corner, but I'm just gonna travel through the image here. And again, the flex type's on the left, GFX is on the right. I think they're very similar. I think the GFX obviously holds up. It gives you a similar resolution, if not a little bit more. And um, these have been resolution matched as well. And yeah, I don't see a huge difference besides the color rendition when it comes to these two. So if we compare it to the 5D scan, which is now on the left, GFX scan on the right, uh, not much difference besides the resolution, obviously, just a bit more magnified. Detail is pretty similar. As we move into the far corners, I don't see a huge difference with this one. Yeah, probably a little bit sharper on the Canon. Again, depth of field issue and maybe not having the optimal lens, but that's it. Those are my samples of some film frames scanned with the Fuji GFX 50S2. I hope that gave you some insight if you're not familiar with all of this. And uh, yeah, this wasn't meant to be comprehensive in any manner. There's some great videos out there, including one by Kyle McDougall, which I'll link in the description if you're interested. But I just wanted to share my findings, some of my overall opinions, which uh, the main thing that I wanted to discuss is is it worth it? Is it worth scanning with a GFX or medium format digital camera to get the ultimate in film scans? 
Well, if you already have one, sure. But I would definitely think that it's not worth investing in the system just to scan film unless you have professional applications you're doing it commercially, in which case you probably wanna go for the 100S for there to be enough difference. The jump from 25 or 34 megapixels to 50 isn't quite as big as jumping up to a 100 megapixel sensor or using something like pixel shift technology in some of those higher end uh, medium format digital cameras. But yeah, if you already have one, if you're investing in it for photography first and foremost, and you can get an appropriate macro lens, whether it's a native one or an adapted one, you can get some amazing results by scanning with a GFX. But again, is it worth buying one just to scan film? Definitely not. Is it going to compare to a flex tight? In sharpness and overall film flatness, you're probably going to have an easier time with the flex tight getting the ultimate result or even a drum scan, but the GFX is going to be much faster. So I would accept the compromise if I already had one of these and uh, scan with this over doing a flex tight scan. If you've ever had a flex tight scan, you would know they're very slow and a drum scan is even slower. Uh, does it match the quality? Maybe not this setup I had, but I think if you had the 100S with the perfect setup, you would um, get as good a result as a flex tight with the benefits of doing it quicker and using Negative Lab Pro to have better control over colors. So that's it, let me know your thoughts. Would you scan with this digital camera? Do you think it's worth it? Personally, I'm happy with my 5D Mark IV, but I was very impressed by the capability of this. However, the main reason I borrowed it was not to do film scanning, but was to actually just shoot some photos with it, which I'm going to uh, compare to the experience of shooting medium format film with my Pentax 645 in an upcoming video on the channel, which should be released in a few weeks from now. So if you're interested, make sure you're subscribed and you keep an eye out for that one. And I'll share some of my results using this camera for photography. And uh, I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you in the next episode of Pushing Film.